Yeah, augmented reality lets you put media out into the world, move the internet out into the world, and allow anybody with a smartphone access to the information they need when and where they are. We have this opportunity to democratize the production and consumption of information that's relevant to the world around us. Augmented reality can really transform the way people think about information. The question really is how to create these experiences such that they're both compelling and useful and potentially address real actual human needs. Whether it's a mundane or practical application like overlaying maintenance instructions on a piece of equipment or medical information on a patient, uh, or something maybe a little bit more complex like taking situational awareness information and presenting it to a soldier or to a first responder or to a policeman. Our Argonne project is about making it possible to create augmented reality experiences just using standard web technologies. The real key is that anybody who knows how to build interactive web technologies, so build a website for a mobile phone, build a website for a desktop, could really create a mobile augmented reality experience. I just dream of this world where I can be wearing my head-worn display and it'll look like a pair of sunglasses. I look down at my car and I see maintenance instructions on it. I'm trying to cook in the kitchen and somehow I can get the recipe just sort of floating next to me in space. What makes people nervous is the idea that the technology would also allow us to categorize and reduce everything around us to information, right, and, and take away the realness of the world. If you look at the history of the web, the history of film, any of the media that we're used to, we didn't really understand what they were good for until lots of creative professionals who had vision, who had ideas, could start experimenting with it. They couldn't have predicted Flickr and Twitter and Amazon and YouTube and all these sites. And so I think the same is going to be true of augmented reality. Until we get it out there, we won't really know what the technology is good for. Hi, my name is Keiichi Matsuda. I'm a designer and filmmaker. This is my studio in Hackney Wick in East London. When I was studying my masters at the Bartlett School, I started to think about how we could introduce virtual worlds into physical spaces. And that's when I found out about augmented reality. So I produced a series of concept films uh, called Augmented Hyperreality that speculated on how our environments could be adapted and digitally enhanced by having this ever-present overlay on the city. One of the defining characteristics of augmented reality is that it's subjective, i.e. like everybody can see their own version of the city. And it means that everything is customizable. So if you imagine the city as a, a series of layers or a series of feeds, you'd be able to subscribe to just the ones that you like. So the city itself becomes a reflection of your tastes and interests. Since the time I started developing those original films, I've always wanted to extend those ideas and continue the research. And now I've just started a self-initiated project that I've backed on Kickstarter called Hyper Reality, which is a series of three films, each from the perspective of a different person, set in Medellin, Colombia. We're never actually going to see the faces of these characters, it's all shot point of view, but what I'm thinking is that you'll be able to understand a lot about the character just by looking at those environments. For Dazina Mini Frontiers, I'm going to take a scene in one of the upcoming Hyper Reality films and explore what it's like to be driving through the augmented city. So the film's going to look at both the kind of in-car functionality, like what the dashboard of the future might look like, but I think the main focus is going to be on what's happening outside the car, the kind of transport infrastructure. The type of future that I'm imagining is a future where augmented reality is everywhere, it's a part of everything. We don't even consider it as a technology anymore. And it means that uh, a lot of the things that we take for granted uh, in everyday life, uh, like when we're navigating on the streets, the, the road markings, the signage, all of that can be applied in the digital layer. And if we consider that, it means that the way traffic systems work could become much more dynamic and much more free-flowing. So you just have sort of open spaces and you drive according to where the markings tell you to go. The problem of the actual interface is something that I get asked about a lot. You know, how does this technology actually work? You know, what is the, the hardware apparatus that we need to see it? I'm aware of some projects happening right at the moment which are sort of set to kind of revolutionize this kind of process is not like Google Glass putting on, but it's something much, much bigger and much deeper. With an overlay, you're always going to be limited. So people are now looking into like contact lenses, for example, which apparently are doing pretty well. And the other big thing I think is, is about kind of projecting directly onto your retina. So it uses kind of system of little mini projectors that, that kind of point directly in.